Okay, so good afternoon guys. So today we're gonna have uh, shared dividends. Actually, ang nakaschedule pala natin ngayon is property dividends. But uh, I would like to discuss property dividends with respect not just to the liability part but also to the asset part. Pero feeling ko kasi may hirapan pa yung iba na walang background sa um, non-current assets held for distribution or non-current assets held for sale. Kaya hindi ko muna uunahin yung property dividends. I'll work on it pa para mas mapadali yung maging discussion natin sa susunod. But uh, for today, we're gonna have shared dividends. Okay? So, uh, the first video that we had together was the, the important dates of dividends and then we had uh, yesterday we had uh, cash dividends pero nabigyan na naman na natin yung cash dividends in lump sum so bigyan lang natin yun ng konting uh, preview yung ating dividends so balikan lang natin sabi natin dividends so these are amounts being given by uh, the company or the corporation which is being declared by the board of directors no? uh, and dividends is one of the two main reason or main um, source of income ng mga nag invest sa stocks, okay? So, sabi ko mga dalawa yung way para magkaroon ka ng kita sa stocks investment. First is through capital appreciation and then the second one is through receipt of dividend income, okay? So, eto yung topic natin ngayon, dividend. So, sabi natin, again, ulitin ko lang ng very, very light. Ang dividends, nire-record yan upon date of declaration. So, upon date of declaration, the obligation of the corporation to give out the dividend to its um, shareholder or outstanding shareholders is recorded. No? So, this is the date no? kung kailan natin nare-record yan. Then, sabi natin, the dividend is only applicable not all to issued shares, not all to authorized shares, but only to outstanding shares. Pinipilit kong gumanda yung sulat, pero wala talaga akong magawa. Okay? So, only two outstanding shares. Now, we have different types of dividends. So, ano-ano ba yung type, types of dividends natin? Or ano-ano mga ba yung pwedeng, pwedeng ibigay ng dividends ng company? Okay? So, we actually have four types of dividends. The first of which is the very common or the most common dividend, which is known as the cash dividend. Okay. So, pagdating natin ng date of declaration, what happens to the cash dividend? So, what we do is we debit the retained earnings and then we credit the cash dividends payable, which is a liability account. Okay. So, liability yan kapag ka hindi pa nadidistribute. Okay. So, the cash dividend may be presented in two ways. So, it could be presented in a per share basis. Ibig sabihin, hindi uh, alam din ng company kung magkano total na ibang mimigay niya. No? Pero, ang ginawa na lang niya to make sure na uh, na fix yung gagawin ni uh, corporation. So, meron nagbibigay na lang siya ng per share amount. So, let's say, we have uh, 2,500 outstanding shares. So, yung, the board of directors of the corporation can declare a 10 peso dividend for each share or a 1 peso dividend for each share. In the end, the amount of the dividend that will be received by each share is already determined. Okay? Pero kahapon naman, what we had was lump sum cash dividend in which case, uh, the board of directors, no, so they decided to give a uh, an exact amount of dividend. So, Kung meron ng mga madagdag na mga kung meron na mga madagdag na shareholders or uh, outstanding shares kasi di ba hangga't hindi naman dumarating yung date of record lahat ng pwedeng lahat ng nakabili pa ng share ay pwede pa ring makareceive ng dividend. So syempre, kung naka per share yan, pataas ang pataas din yung ibibigay na pataas na pataas din yung ibibigay natin na dividend or ilalabas sa dividend ng corporation. Pero kung naka lump sum naman na yan, so, kumbaga, nabakuwasan yung, or nawawala yung risk na tumaas pa or na bumaba pa yung amount ng dividend na ilalabas natin. Kasi nga, exact amount na yung natin. So, kung magkano yung lapsang, dumami sila o kumonti sila, then nakadepende na yun. So, kapag ka lapsang, nabanggit na natin yan, meron tayong nakadepende pa rin yan sa 
type ng ating preferences. Okay? So, nabagit natin ka upon, there are two possible features a preferential it can have, okay? The first one is the cumulative feature, wherein, sabi natin, pagayang pag ay cumulative, ibig sabihin na yan ay pwedeng maningil ng mga dividend sa mga nakaraang taon na hindi sila napagdeklaran, okay? So, ibig sabihin, pwede yung singilin yung sa nakaraan. That is, when the preferential has a cumulative Feature. The other feature that a preferential can uh, obtain is the participation feature. In which case, the preferential the, uh, the, the preferential dividend rate is being shared to the ordinary shares, and the receivable amount which was originally being given to the ordinary shareholders is also being shared to the prefer preference shares. Okay. So, it could be a combination of non-cumulative, non-participating. It could be cumulative but not participating. It could be non-cumulative, okay, but participating. And it could be both. It could be both cumulative and participating. So, konting recap lang tayo. Ano sabi natin? Basta yung cumulative, baka lang talaga yan kay preference. So, kung... Siya mag ay may participation na feature. So, as a general rule, kung meron binigay na particip participation rate, so we use the participation rate. However, if there is no participation rate given in the problem, whatever the preferential dividend rate of the preference shares shall be also used as the participation rate. Are we clear? Okay. However, in some instances, we're in the problems kung being uh, more than one type of preference shares and the uh, participate or the preferential dividend rate is different from one another. So what we do, the, the uh, lower preferential rate or the, the lower rate shall be used. Okay, so pag iinay pag dalawa silang participating na lumitas. Okay, so now there are, all, there are other types of dividend. So we also have property dividend. Actually, the property dividend on the part of the liability account, if you're not gonna account with the, with the asset itself, no, wala nang mag masyadong problema. All you have to do is to update the amount of the property that you will be distributing as dividends, okay? So, another type of non-cash dividend, we also have share dividend. Okay. And we have the script dividend, okay? Itong script dividend na ito, utang na loob, huwag lalagyan ng letter T, ha? Okay, so this, this shall remain T less, no? So, dividend. Okay, so, pansin nyo mga gumaganda na yung sulat na yung pinagpapraktisan natin yan, tsaka. Okay, so, share dividend and script dividend. But for today, we're gonna have share dividend, okay? Pahagina na rin natin ng bong ng bongga yung property. Okay? So, done with this, let's go to share dividend. That time, na-discuss ko na sa inyo, uh, na parang nabanggit ko na nung first Zoom meeting natin, na sabi ko na sa inyo, that in the important dates, na, on the date of declaration, this is where you establish the liability. Because this is where you establish the right of the shareholder to receive the dividend and the obligation of the company to give the dividend because it is already declared. Remember what's the general rule? The general rule is no declaration, no dividend policy. Okay? So on the date of declaration, we debit the retail earnings and then we credit the dividends payable. So it could be cash dividends payable that we discussed to before, but it could also be property dividends payable. It could also be script dividends payable. Okay? But it will never be share dividend payable. Why? Kasi kung mapapansin ninyo, ito, no? this is a liability because pag dumating na yung time ng, div ng pa dividend payment or Payment date. Okay? Ito, maglalabas ka ng asset. 
Okay? Ito, pag dumating na yung date of distribution or date of payment, maglalabas ka rin ng asset. Ibig sabihin, utak talaga to, no? Itong script dividend, actually, this is in the form of notes payable. So, in short, dahil utak pa rin to, so pag nababayaran mo na, Magbaba, maglalagay ka din na, magbibigay ka din ng asset, maglalabas ka ng asset. But what, what's, uh, what's the difference? Pagdating natin ng share dividend, it's not actually a liability. No? So this is a, or this is part of equity. Because share dividend is like giving additional or bonus issues to the shareholders. Okay? So share dividend must maybe Uh, given in a form of percentage. So, let's say for example. So, pag wala itong taglo na to, okay, pag wala yan, malamang ang dividend natin ay share dividend. And when one, it is a share dividend, we call it share dividend distributable. Okay, yeah? So, again, among all types of dividend, this is the only dividend which does not create a liability because this is an equity account. Okay? So, share dividend, it is like a share capital which is not yet issued. So, kung baga, hindi pa, hindi pa, talaga, hindi pa talaga siya na i-issue, pero part na siya ng share capital. Kasi alam mo, na para na siya sa shareholder. So, although hawak pa siya ng company, pero alam mo na yung end game niya is mapunta pa rin naman talaga sa mga shareholder. So, it is considered as part of the share capital. Okay? So, on the date of declaration, anyway, before that, so let me give you a uh, little lecture about share dividend. Okay? So, other than cash dividend, these are all non-cash dividends. And they are being given by the, co by the corporation when the corporation wants to reduce the amount of its retained earnings. So, pagbabawasan niya amount ng retained earnings niya, of course, one thing that it can do is declare dividends. No? So, sa mga nakapag-aral na ng taxation, alam niya, no, when it comes to corporation, we have what we call improperly accumulated earnings tax. No? Kung saan, nagbabayad tayo ng 10%, if I'm not mistaken, huh? 10% ng sobra ng retained earnings over its share capital or its paid up capital. Kaya hindi naman din pwedeng pabayaan na masyadong lumaki yung total na retained earnings natin. Okay? So, one way para mabawasan yun no? is to declare dividends. Okay, now, the problem is, The corporation may have lots of retail earnings, but they do not have enough cash to distribute to its shareholders. So, sabi nila, kung wala kaming cash, paano kami makakapagbigay? E kung hindi naman kami magbibigay at hindi kami magbabawas ng retail earnings, tataksan naman kami ng 10% dun sa excess na yun. No? So, sa excess ng retail earnings over our paid up capital. So, sabi nila ganun, if we cannot give cash, maybe, We can give other assets or other things that cash, no? So, they have property dividend, we have share dividend, and we have script dividend, okay? So, property dividend must have other assets, no? So, maliwalay naman yun. Sabi niya, sige, bigyan na lang itawag ng cash, pero bigyan na lang itawag ng mga, uh, pinedeclare ko na yung land na yun, okay? Sa lahat ng mga shareholders ko. So, paano nga maghahati-hati yun? So, Sila na may problema nun eh. Kung halimbawa, ibebenta ba ng company yun? Then, then kung ano yung proceeds man nun, no? whatever the proceeds is, yun na yung i-distribute sa mga uh, outstanding shareholders. So, basta yun, no? So, basta property. So, it could be the form of EPE. It could be the form of inventories. It could be the form of um, Uh, investments, no? So, halimbawa, si company A ay nag-invest kay company B. So, bumili siya ng iba ng stocks. So, syempre, on the part of company A, asset niya yung stocks ni company B. So, yung stocks na yon pwedeng ipamigay kay 
outstanding shareholders. At pag binamigay yung mga stocks na yun, ang tawag natin doon ay property dividend. So, hindi porket ang binigay natin ay stocks. Share dividend na agad or shares. Ibig sabihin, share dividend na agad. Kasi, kung pwede tayo magbigay ng stocks na hindi naman talaga tayo yung nag issue Kasi kung tayo ang nag issue you call it share dividend. Ibig sabihin, you are giving shares of your company, of your own company, to your outstanding shareholders. And that is what you call share dividend. But what if you declare, div you declare dividend and what you're planning to distribute is shares of stocks, but not of your company, but of another company. Okay, so it's stocks that you hold. So what do you call that in, in uh, the on the part of the uh, holder? So you call it investment in stocks, no? So, meron tayong ganyan. So, kapag yung investment in stocks mo pinamigay mo, it's not a share. Although it is a stock. But it's not treated as share dividend, but rather a property dividend. I hope that clears uh, some gray area sa mga nababasa nyo sa libro. No? Kasi madalas pag property dividend, more likely ang binibigay sa libro na example is um, EPE and inventories. But, uh, yeah. Just let me be clear on that one. So, share dividend. Let's have share dividend. We have two types of share dividend. Okay? So, there are two types of share dividend. This is known as the small share dividend and the large share dividend. So, what's the difference between the two? So, sabi natin, mag-isa lang naman yung okay? Buray ko lang ito. Huwag nyo nang buray ko sa inyo sa akin kasi tatamaan. So, What's the difference between the two? Eh kung pareho lang naman sila na hindi liability, tatandaan yan, lagi yung tinatanong. Shared dividend distributable is not liability, but an equity account, ha? So there are two types of shared dividend. We have the small shared dividend, which is 1%, no? Or actually, kahit naman hindi 1%, no? Basta less than, okay? Less than 19% of Outstanding shares. Okay. Then the large dividend is 20% and above. Pag nagbasa kayo sa internet, actually, ang makikita nyo, hanggang 25 is small. No? They consider ang 25 is small, pero yun ay under US GAAP. So, siguro, in this, sa point na to, hindi ginaya yun ng Pilipinas, so, Basta sa Pilipinas, ang ginagamit natin is 20% large na yan. Ang 19% and below is considered a small dividend. But what's the difference in the accounting if both are equity naman? No? So, if you think, no, or if based on our computation, the bonus issue is only 19% or less of the outstanding shares, then therefore, you account for it using its Fair market value or par value, okay, whichever is higher, okay. Bakit mo kailangan pa na fair value or par value whichever is higher? Bakit hindi na lang gawing fair value mismo, okay? So, meron kasi tayong rule na malalabag pagka, ito lang yung ginawa natin, wala nang sanang problema. Ang problema, wala nang sanang problema kung walang possibility na mas mababa sa par value yung ating fair market value ng share. Dito kasi di ba what happens? If, let us say for example, sabi natin, the par value, ito dapat yung gamitin natin na minimum amount ng share. Ayun yung legal capital nga natin. You can still remember legal capital. No? Legal capital is recorded at par because that is the minimum amount that a share can be sold. Okay? The par value. So assume that the par is 10. If the fair market value is 12, there will be no problem. Pagka hindi natin dinamit yung rule ng token, sinabi lang natin na small dividend is recorded at fair market value. Diba? Wala nang problema. But what if the fair market value, instead of being 12, it was 8? No? So kung 8 ito, tapos 10 ang par, kung pwede mo bang i-issue yung shares? Okay? So based on the principle of watered stock, hindi mo pwedeng i-issue ang share at 8 kasi mas mababa siya sa par. Sabi nga sa inyo, 
par must be the minimum diba? amount at which a share must be sold or may be sold. Okay? So that, that should be the minimum. Kaya ginawa na ang ruling ay fair market value or par value, whichever is higher. Now, if the share dividend accounts for a large share dividend, which means that the number of shares to be distributed by the board of directors or by the corporation to its outstanding shareholder is 20% and above. So I mean, including 20, 20, 21, 22, and so on and so forth. Okay? So you record it at par. Okay? Bakit daw? Bakit magkaiba? Bakit ito pwede tumaas? Bakit ito hanggang par lang? No? So, kasi, sa totoo lang, ang share dividend, hindi yan income. No? Kaya nga, Hindi naman yan liability, hindi naman yan lumalabas, hindi naman nag naglalabas ng asset. No? Wala ka naman, wala na magtataas sa iyo pag nagkaroon ka ng additional na share. Eh. Kailan lang yan tataas pag nagkaroon na ng uh, ng bagong value yung share at the end of the year. So, tataas na kasi kung halimbawa, meron kang 10,000 shares. Okay? Uh, you have 10,000 shares. Tapos nag-declare halimbawa ng 10% share dividend. Okay? Ibig sabihin nun, kung nag-declare ng 10% share dividend, so you can do this, times 10%, so meron kang, so 10,000 hawak mo, times 10% na share dividend, so meron kang additional na 1,000 shares. Or simply, pwede mo naman gawin, 10,000 times 1.10. Ibig sabihin, ang bago mo ng shares ay 11,000. Or, doon yun, 10,000 plus 1,000. Okay? So, ayun yung sinasabi natin na share dividend. Now, if this 10,000 shares, no, assuming na naka-record sa iyan at 50,000, pag nadagdagan ka ng 1,000 share, wala na bang ibang madadagdag na asset sa'yo? Hindi naman yan, kung magkano yung amount ito, kala nyo ba madadagdag dito? Not right away, okay? So, ang mangyayari lang yan, this 50,000 will account for 11,000 shares. So, in short, wala ka talagang naging income. That's why share dividend is not accounted for as an income. So, anong kinalaman nito dito sa pag-value at fair market value or at par? No? So, if, sabi niya, 19 and below is considered immaterial. Ibig sabihin daw, kung halimbawa, kasi di ba pag So, 10, 50,000 pesos divided by 10,000 so that accounts for 5 pesos per share. Tama? Pero dahil na hindi naman magbababa yung amount, kahit maging 11,000 yan, dahil nagdagdag ka ng 10% na share dividend, which is considered as small. Okay? So, 11,000. So, ang magiging mangyayari lang yan, 50,000 divided by 11,000. And that will account for how much? How much is 50,000 over 11,000? How much? Four? Four point? Fifty-nine? Okay. Four point fifty-five, which is, diba? How much was the difference? There is a difference of forty-five cents, which is immaterial. So sabi niya, okay lang, kung small lang naman, ang ide-declare mo, hindi mo mababago ang, amount, ang market price ng shares mo. So, from 5 pesos, no, ang magiging share mo ay magiging 4 pesos and 55 cents. So, dahil immaterial lang yung change, okay lang kahit i-record mo na siya at fair market value. Pero kasi kapag ka large na or 20% na, so medyo malaki lang na yan. Assuming ito, 50,000, oh, divided by 12. How much? 12,000. Kasi nga, mawa 20%, no? So, that is 10,000 times 1.20. Diba? Or 20% na larger dividend. So, this should be uh, 12,000. Ayan. So, yung dati mong 50,000 na investment, i-divide mo na ngayon sa 12 pesos. Magkano na magiging per share amount? How much is the per share amount? It's 4 point, 4 point what? 
17. Okay? So, ito kasi kanina natin na niya, no? 5 pa din yan, eh. Pero ito, 4 na lang. No? So, kung makikita ninyo, meron tayong, ma, meron tayong, ah, uh, hindi na siya basta immaterial lang. So, there's already immaterial effect. Actually, nasa floor grade pa tayo na 20%. What if 50%, di ba? So, it will be 50 divided by uh, 15,000, okay? So, ganun lang. So, dahil masyadong magbabago na yung amount na uh, share natin, pag ang ginamit natin ay large share dividend, ibig sabihin, hindi na niya i-allow na fair market value yung ganitin. So, par value lang yung gagamitin natin. So, that's the reason kung bakit uh, dito, ina-allow na fair market value yung ganitin, dito naman par. So, saan ba yung kwenta ng sinasabi ko na to? So, let's have this sample problem. Okay. Basta tandaan na, a small share dividend is 19% and below. Okay. And recorded at the higher between the par value and the fair market value of the share. And the script dividend, I the script, sorry, the large share dividend is 20% and above and is only recorded at par. Okay, on the date of declaration, again, ah, the SDD or the shared dividend distributable is an equity account, which accounts the same with the share capital, which means kung naka-share capital si shared dividend distributable, it is recorded at par. And any excess would result to share premium. Okay. Assuming that there are, um, let's say, 25,000 outstanding shares. Okay. So, assuming there are 25,000 outstanding shares and the company decided to give 15% share dividend. Okay. So, there was 15% share dividend. Sabi-sabihan, ilang shares ang ipapamigay natin, okay? So, assuming that the, uh, the par value of the dividend is 10, and the fair market value of the dividend is 12. Okay, first step, what type of share dividend did the company declare? Is it a small share dividend or a large share dividend? So, it, since it is only 15, this is small. And since this is small, how should we account for it? Fair market value or par value? Whichever is higher. Tama? So, whichever is higher, that is 12. So, on the date of declaration, we record debit, retained earnings. How much will be deducted from the retained earnings? So, we have how many shares? How many shares will be distributed? We have 25,000. Okay? times 15%. So, this is how much? Ilan ba? 15. So, we have 2... 3, 7, 15? Tama ba? Okay. Therefore, an additional 3,750 shares will be recorded. So, ang gagawin lang natin dito, para lang tayo nag-i-issue ng shares. But, Ang pagkakaiba lang niya, on the date of declaration, since only the rights and obligations are to be recorded by the corporate, uh, by the corporation, no? So, on the retained earnings, sabi natin, di ba, higher between FP or PAR. So, 3,750 shares na i-distribute natin sa holders na 25,000 outstanding shares, multiplied by 12. So that's how much? 45,000? 45, okay, 45,000. So on the date of the declaration, we debit retained earnings at 45,000. And then credit the share dividends distributable again and again and again. Share dividend distributable is not a liability account but an equity account and it is accounted for the same as with share capital which means this is always recorded at 
par. Remember that. Share capital are always recorded at par. Tama? So, share your dividend distributable is like share capital. So, it is recorded at par. So, STD, magkano ba yun? So, kahit hindi ko ito ilagay, ha? automatic yun, ha? So, STD, so we have 37,500. Tama? Which is 3,750 times 10. So, ito yung SDT mo. No? Ito yung iyong share premium. So, whatever is the excess will be treated as share premium. So, if that is an ordinary share, so share premium, ordinary share capital, share, share premium, ordinary shares. So, that's how much? 7,500? Tama po? Tama ba? Kasi 45,000, sabi mo. Okay, so that is 7,500. On the date of record, ano natutunan sa date of record? Will there be any entry on the date of record? Wala. And on the date of payment, so eto, kung paano ito babayaran? Bibigyan ka ba ng pera? Of course, hindi. So, at the date of payment, iyan, on the date of payment, this will be distributed. So ito, actually, on the date of declaration, na-record mo na yung iyong share premium. Okay? Kaya pagdating dito, babayaran mo na lang. So, from SDD, no, na 37,500, it will now become a full, full pledge share. No? So it will now become ordinary share capital 37,500. So in this case, at the day, no payment, the shares are issued. Nasa na yung share premium? And na recorded na yun yung date of declaration. So, pag date of payment, na record mo rin siya, there will be redundancy. So, pag na, naulit natin siya, syempre, magkakamali na yung corporate books natin. No? So, pag na record na siya dito, syempre, at dito talaga siya yung re-record, hindi na natin siya that is how easy the share dividend is. Okay. Nakukuha ko. Okay. Isang point pa tayo nila. So, palitan lang natin yung given. Okay. Uh, assuming there are 105,000 and 45% share dividend was given. The par value is 10 and the fair market value of each share is 12. First question, what type of share dividend did we declare? Is it a small share dividend or a large share dividend? Small or large? Large. Because it is already 45%. Okay? And since this is already a large share dividend, should we use fair market value or par? Or the higher between the two? So in this case, because this will have a material impact on the market price of the shares. So, dahil material na yun, hindi natin pwedeng gamitin yung market price niya or yung fair market value niya. Kaya, ang gagamitin natin ay par na 10. Do you get me? Therefore, on the date of declaration, what should be recorded? Debit retail earnings, 105,000 multiplied by 45%. So that's how many shares. How many? How shares? Yan? How many shares? 105,000 multiplied by 45%. I have a computer because I made the problem on the spot. 37 to 50? Is it? Is it magiging ano yun, di ba? 50 to 500 yung palahati yun. 50 to 500 minus 5% na lang. Minus Sige, kasi 50% ko muna. Basta tanggalin ko na lang yung 5%. 
O, basta ilan? Ilan? 47? Ilan? Ilan? Yes, 105,000 shares multiplied by 45. 47,250. Okay. So, we have 47,250 shares. So, nagtiwala ko dun sa nag-multiply. Pag naman, hindi po yan, hindi ako may kasalanan. Nagbigay agad na alam. So, 47,250 shares. Should we use the par value or the fair market value or the higher between? So, par value lang. Kasi nga, Large share dividend. So, 47 to 50 times 10%. So, this is... Wait, kami, nasa, what 10%? 10 pesos. 10 pesos. So, this is 472,500. Tama mo? Okay. So, on the date of the declaration, so, we debit 427,000 472 pala. 472,500 and credit share dividend distributable on at the same amount, no? Kasi diba ang SDD ay nakapar. Since ito ay nakapar, same amount lang. So what's another conclusion? If you would be given the entry at hindi sinabi kung anong type ng share dividend, kung large ba siya or small, how will you know that the dividends declared was a small share dividend or a large share dividend? On the date of declaration, makikita mo agad, no? If the uh, dividend declared is a small share dividend, it must have this. More likely, no? Hindi naman absolute kasi sometimes the par value is higher than the fair market value. But more likely, Pag may lumabas na share premium, matik, pag may lumabas na share premium, automatic small. Pero pag, uh, alimbawa, wala, it could be small or large. Pero pag dito pa lang, nakita nyo na meron ng share premium, small yan. Bakit? Kasi the larger dividend will never have a share premium account on its entry at the date of declaration. Because whatever is you're, whatever you're gonna give, no? Sabi mo, at par. So at par lang yung ibibigay ni retail earnings. Eh, ang SDD mo at par din. So it is very impossible for you to have an account in the form of share premium. So kailangan magkakaroon ba na share premium? Diba? When the fair market value is greater, greater than the par value, on uh, in case of large share dividend, kahit mapakataas ng fair market value mo, hindi mo naman gagamitin. Why? Kasi nga sabi nga natin, in a large share dividend, in which case 20% and above of the outstanding shares being given, you only use par value and nothing more, nothing else. Okay? It's not the same with small share dividend since this is immaterial. Even if you use the fair market value, no? which is higher than the par most of the time, no? sa problem, most of the time, pa, uh, fair market value pa rin talaga yung tinataasan. No? So dito, so a small share dividend may result to share premium. Large share dividend, walang share premium. So that's one thing to remember. On the date of record, again, kahit anong klaseng dividend pa yan, you have no entry. Uulitin ko, bakit walang entry on the date of record? Because on the date of record, there is no business transaction. Okay? So, because on the date of record, you are just actually seeing who should be the beneficiaries of the dividends declared by the board of directors. Okay? So, sino lang? Eh, ngayon, kung nalaman mo kung sino, so, what's the business transaction? Wala. So, there's nothing to record. No? So, there's no entry on the date of record. Then, on the date of payment, you simply issue the shares. So, from a share dividend distributable, So, it will now become a full-pledged share no, in the form of ordinary share capital. So, nandito na siya sa ordinary share capital na siya papasok. And this will be the entry. 
Okay? Are we clear? Okay. So this is one type of problem. So this is one of the uh, most common phases of problem. Sasabihin agad sa'yo kung ilang percent yung share. Therefore, malalaman mo agad anong klase ng share dividend yung meron. Is it small or is it large? So, kapag ka binigay ito, mas madali. Diba? But there is another phase of the problem wherein the percentage will not be given. The total amount of shares will be given directly. Okay? So, paano naman yung ganun? Okay. Tambawa ganito. Abot ko pang nalawin taas. Okay. Assuming you have these shareholders like me. So, you have ordinary share of capital of 5 par. 100,000 is authorized. Hindi ko naman ganito. 100 k Authorized. A.E. Issued an outstanding. Okay. The share premium ordinary share capital from ordinary shares. So this is ano? How, how much is the ordinary share capital? So this will be 80,000 times 5. Tama? So that's a total of 400. Thousand. Then, the share premium or from uh, issuance of these shares amounted to, let us say, 250,000. Okay? Then, dreaming earnings is already at 590,000. So, wala pa man yan. Improperly accumulated tax. Okay. So, hindi pa siya matatak sa mga. Okay. So, 590,000. So, eto na ngayon yung yung shareholders equity. Then, sabi nga niyan, the board of directors, ito nga yung problem, the board of directors declared Ten thousand shares as dividends. So in this case, sinabi niya na mag ilan yung bibigay niya. Pero hindi niya sinabi ilang percent yon, small ba yon, large ba yon, paano ba siya miyakaw? Now it is your problem. No? How will you know if it is a small share dividend or a larger dividend? So what you do is to get the shares. So you have 10,000 shares to be issued. How many shares were outstanding? We have 80. Tama? Okay. 80,000 share. shares. No? 80,000 shares. That means, ilang percent yan? 12.5? Is it? Tama ba? Nakukuha pa po ba? Yun, patay pala ang miti. Nawala. Okay. So, 12.5%. So, 10,000 divided by 80,000. So, this will be 12.5%. So, from this, Makikita mo na agad na yung dineclare ay small share dividend. Then you can proceed to these entries na. So, the date of declaration, so, you simply, you, uh, kung binigay halimbawa yung fair market value, the fair market value is, let's say, 7, no? So, since this is small, the par value is 5, the fair market value is 7, so you use 7. And sinabi naman niya na kung ilang shares yung, yung ibibigay niya, so, on the date of declaration, the entry should be a debit to retained earnings, no? that is 70,000, and a credit to share dividends distributable for 50,000, which is at par, remember, again, SDD is at par, 
and then the excess of 2 pesos per share will be accounted for as share premium. So that is 20,000 or 10,000 times the 2 peso excess. On the date of record, there will be no entry. And on the date of payment, the entry would be SDD, 50,000, and credit, OSC, 50,000. So, ayun yung dalawang phase ng problem. Yung isa, ibibigay yung percentage. Yung isa, hindi. So, assuming, ito na nakalagay na ganito, wala na de-authorized, 80,000 issued. Pero, halimbawa, ang outstanding lang niya ay 17, no? O kaya 16. So, 60,000 outstanding. So, kung 60,000 na yung outstanding shares mo, ibig sabihin, meron kang 20,000 na nasa treasury. So, what you do, you have 10,000 shares na ipapamigay over not 80,000 because this is issued shares. So, syempre, dahil lang outstanding shares mo ay 60, so, sila lang yung makakareceive ng dividend. So, sila yung makakaalag ilang percentage ng share nila yung patatagdag sa kanila. So, that is, uh, kung ito ay 60, so, 1.6 is, hindi ko alam to, 16.67 ba? So, parang ganun. 16.67%. So, 16.67% is still a small share dividend. Therefore, nagamitin pa rin natin ay fair market value. So, the entry on the date of the declaration will be debit retail earnings at fair market value because that is higher than your par value of 5. So, 10,000 times 7, this is 70,000. So, it does not change, no? The SDD is still 50,000. And the uh, share premium is at 20,000. Okay? Well, the date of record, there will be no entry, but the date of issuance of the share, the date of payment. So, the entry would be debit SDD and credit OSC for 50. Ma'am, bakit hindi naman ma'am nagbago? Eh, kala ko ba yung isa kanina, 16.67, ay, mayroon 16.67, yung kanina 12.5%. Bakit? Wala naman pagbabago sa entry. Eh, kasi nag-gather mo sa kanila percentage. Since binigay naman na yung number ng share na ipapamigay ni company, so, it wouldn't matter. Actually, ang purpose lang naman ng pagkuha natin ng percentage, just to know if it is a small share dividend or a large share, Dividend. So, since both are small share dividend, bo uh, both use this uh, policy, which is to use the fair market value in case it is higher than the par value. So, since same lang naman yung given natin, tsaka sinabi naman na, determine naman na kung ilang percent yung ay kung ilang shares yung ipapamigyan, so the answer will still be the same. So, that's all for share dividend. I hope you have learned something from this video. So, just share it to your classmates, no? So, and practice, please, on your reviewers. Thank you and goodbye.